Shout out to Chalam, everybody. We greet you. This is Hebrew Readers Church. We thank you for joining with us today. I'm your brother, Zakwa, and this is your brother, Kasifo. Um, We do have our part three of identifying the tribe of Levi lesson today. Uh, we hope that you go back if you have not seen part one and part two, so you can get the entire understanding of the lesson. And it's uh, very complex and uh you definitely want to take your time and go through each video and not just jump into it. Um, Brother Kasifo? Yes. You got anything before we get going? If you'd like to get the PDF notes to this lesson, please visit the website, Doctrine Video Notes, to get the PDF to help follow along easier. For you mean HebrewReaders.com, right? I don't know what I just said, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrew, <laughs> you can go to HebrewReaders.com and then you have to go to Doctrine, then Notes, and then you'll see the notes for each lesson next to the thumbnail. Uh, thank you, man. I skipped the whole You're website. <laughs> it's all right, man. Oh, man. <laughs> all right, let's go, Levi. <laughs> Damn, <man. laughs> all right, give you strength. Let's get it. Uh, we've learned some preeminent struggles for the Levites and some good admonitions on overcoming them. Now let's get into the Testament of Levi to learn. Levi himself, an example he set, right? The Testament of Levi starting at chapter one. Let's run. All right. Testament of Levi chapter one, verse one. The copy of the words of Levi, the things which he ordained unto his sons, according to all that they should do. And what things should befall them unto the day of judgment. This is how we know this testament can help identify Levites because he is telling of what we would do and what will befall us. Continue, please. He was sound in health when he called them to him, for it had been revealed to him that he should die. And when they were gathered together, he said to them, I, Levi, was born in Haran, and I came with my father to Shechem. And I was young, about 12 years of age, when with Simeon I brought vengeance on Hamor for our sister Dinah. And when I was feeding the flocks in Abel Moor, the spirit of understanding of the Lord came upon me, and I saw all men corrupting their way, and that unrighteousness had built for itself walls and lawlessness set upon towers. And I was grieving for the race of the sons of men, and I prayed to the Lord that I might be saved. When the spirit of understanding is upon Levi, he's compassionate towards the shortcomings of others and their faults. In the spirit of understanding, he doesn't view himself as any better than them either, but understands that he himself needs deliverance and seeks through prayer to be delivered from his own corruptions. And that's understanding in itself to know only through Allah Hayyam, hearing our prayers we can be saved. When the spirit of understanding isn't upon us, Levites tend to look down upon the transgressions of others and think we are more righteous, not realizing we ourselves have a need to be delivered from our own sins. The Pharisee who justified himself in Luke 18, verse 9 to 14, while looking down on the man next to him, is a good example of the struggles of Levi. Levites need the spirit of understanding to be compassionate upon the sins of others, to stop being critical of others' shortcomings. This spirit will also aid us to see our own faults through self-examination and prayer for our own deliverance, being single-minded not busying ourselves with what others got going on, but getting the beam out of our own eyes so we can see clearly ourselves. Can continue Levi chapter 2, verse 5 to 10, please. Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a high mountain, and I was upon it. Notice here, it took the spirit of understanding to be compassionate upon others and repenting, asking to be saved for Levi to be exalted upon the mount. Levites are spiritual people. 
It's just who we are. And yet it's not always for the good, because if we're unrighteous, all those spirits of wickedness and pride will attend upon us to cause us to sin. Prayer is important, as you have seen in the case of Levi, who prayed when he had the moment of self-awareness. And you can see prayer delivered Peter as well, because Satan desired to have him too. But Yahweh's prayer delivered him. If we are humble and working towards perfection and simplicity of heart, the good angels will be there to help us. As in the case of Hermas, who had the angel of repentance for his help, uh, Fanuel. Continue, please. And behold, the heavens were opened, and the angel of Elohim said to me, Leave, I enter. And I entered from the first heaven, and I saw there a great sea hanging. And further I saw a second heaven, far brighter and more brilliant, for there was a boundless light also therein. And I said to the angel, Why is this so? And the angel said to me, Marvel not at this, for thou shalt see another heaven more brilliant and incomparable. The things Levi went up in the heavens to do, his posterity would fulfill in the earth. All right, please. Continue, please. And, yes, I'm, I'm about to read. And when thou oh, hast sorry. ascended thither, thou shalt stand near the Lord. That's Moses. And shalt be his minister. Aaron, the high priest. And shalt declare his <laughs> mysteries to men. The prophets, Jeremiah, Baruch, Ezra, Ezekiel. Right, and shall proclaim concerning him that shall redeem Israel. John the Baptist is crying in the wilderness. And by thee in Judah shall the Lord appear among men, saving every race of men. That's one of the two witnesses, because it's going to be Levi and Judah in these end times. All right, and one will be a son of Levi. All right, and from the Lord's portion shall be thy life, and he shall be thy field and vineyard and fruits, gold and silver. Levi's posterity in the kingdom shall have their portion from Elohim as his priests and ministers still, because Ahiah will not break his covenant with Levi to be his ministers offering sacrifices according to Jeremiah 33. So all things to come are shown here. Continue, please. Uh, this is the Testament of Levi chapter three, verse one. Here, therefore, regarding the heavens, which have been shown to thee, the lowest is for this cause gloomy unto thee, and in it it beholds all the unrighteous deeds of men, and it has fire, snow, and ice made ready for the day of judgment, and the righteous judgment of Elohim. For in it are all the spirits of the retribution for vengeance on men, and in the second there are the hosts of the armies which are ordained from the day of judgment, to work vengeance on the spirits of deceit and of Belier, and above them are the holy ones, and in the highest of all dwelleth the great glory, far above all holiness, and the heaven next to it are the archangels, who minister and make propitiation to the Lord for all the sins of ignorance of the righteous, offering to the Lord a sweet smelling savor, a reasonable and bloodless offering. Propitiation for sins are sweet smelling savor unto Ahaya. The children of Levi are to be ministers like the angels, and the true offerings of propitiation is to forsake unrighteousness through faith in Yahche. Can you read Sirach 35 and 3, please? To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. Look at that. See the true sacrifices of forsaking our ways? If our heart be sincere, these sacrifices of a broken heart and contrite spirit will not be despised, according to Psalms 51 and 17. Along with our propitiation of forsaken unrighteousness, offering praise glorifies Elohim. The Spirit spake by Ace after Levites on this. Can you read Psalms 50 and 23, please? Whoso offers praise glorifies me. And to him that order of his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of Elohim. We see praise and order in our conversation aright by forsaking unrighteousness would inspire Elohim to show us his salvation. His salvation is Yachit. So these good works will open our spiritual eyes. Can you read the definition for praise, please? H8426. Properly an extension of the hand. That is by implication a vowel or usually adoration 
especially a choir of worshipers. Confession. Uh, confessions. Uh, also how we praise. All right, continue, please. Sacrifice or praise, thanksgiving or thank offering. So we see how offering our praise and ordering our conversation aright requires confession of sins and forsaking them to get mercy so that our eyes may be open to see the salvation of Allah Hayyam. Can you read Testament of Levi, chapter 3, verse 5, it looks like? In the heaven next to it are the archangels who minister and make propitiation to the Lord for all the sins and ignorance of the righteous. Levites, confessions are needed for the archangels to make propitiations for our sins of ignorance. Let's see how confession brings mercy. Can you read Proverbs 28 and 13, please? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. If we're self-justified, or downplaying our faults, or won't acknowledge our faults, how can propitiation be offered for us if we cover our sins thinking we are right in our own eyes, or struggle to admit for fear of embarrassment in the sight of men? We won't prosper like this, brethren. Continue, please. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Now we know in the heavens there is a propitiation offered if we confess and we see that this gets us the mercy from Allah if we forsake our sins. Can you read Psalms 32 and 5, please? I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Ahiah, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Cello. Cello. Think about it. Think about how powerful confession is. It grant us forgiveness. Can you read the definition of confess, please? H3034. 30, uh, a primitive root used only as denominative, uh, literally to use, that is hold out or hold out the hand, physically to throw a stone or an arrow at or away. You're, that's Yoda. You're throwing it. Sin is like a stone that hurts or an arrow that injures the target. By confessing, we throw that instrument of cruelty that hurts us up to Allah Hayyam. Continue, please. Especially to revere or worship by extended hands. This is actually an act of reverence to confess unto him and cast our sins from us. Continue, please. Intensely to bemoan by wringing the hands cast out. Evil oh, spirits cast. get... Oh, sorry. That's okay. Go okay. It's all right, man. Evil spirits get cast out by confessing sin because it's the light of Christ bringing the strongholds to light. And when we speak truth, acknowledging the fault, that breaks the yoke of those evil spirits because they thrive on keeping us in pride, unwilling to repent, or acknowledging the issue, or anger justifying our actions or leading us unto sorrow going further into depression when we mess up. Continue, please. Make confession or to confess, mm -hmm. praise, shoot, give thanks, uh, thankful, thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. Making confession shows we are thankful and it's an act of thanksgiving. He really is a father and just wants us to repent and turn back so that we can be saved. He isn't as a man that keeps anger or bears a grudge. He is the Father of mercies. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, please? Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith I. And I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith I. And I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the higher thou I am and hath scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice. That's really all he's looking for, a repentant heart. Can you read Job chapter 33, verse 27? He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. 
that man that says that is offering sacrifices. Continue Psalms 51 and 17, please. The sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O Elohim, thou wilt not despise. That repentant heart and humble spirit won't be despised. Can you read Job 33 and 28, please? He will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. When we finally get shown the light of Christ through repentance, we begin to walk in it. Can you read 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 and 9, please? But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahshua Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. Those confessions make his propitiation cleanse us from all sins because we confess them just like the priest confessed the sins over the lamb and the sin offering in the law. Continue, please. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's dependent on if we confess, brethren. So hopefully this helps to have the right mindset towards confessing sins as an act of praise and thanksgiving. Can you read Psalms 50 and 14, please? Offer unto Allah thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. The power of propitiation by good works and offering of thanksgiving by confessing faults is important for the children of Levi to understand because we struggle with confessing our faults, not understanding that it is righteous and praiseworthy to do instead of trying to downplay what we did or tell the story in a way that shifts the blame to make us look like the victim and we had no part to play in the issue. Aaron is a good example of how a struggling Levite errors by making an excuse to downplay the sins and put the blame on others, rather than confessing our fault in the matter of the golden calf in Exodus 32. When he didn't say he was wrong for making the calf, but just blamed the people and minimized his role in the situation, never saying that he actually made the calf himself to save face. Levites tend not to tell you what we did wrong if you don't ask the right questions trying to save face. Yet, you can see the growth of a Levite in the faith in Aaron as well. Because in Numbers chapter 12, he confessed this sin and didn't make any excuse or try to justify what happened as an example of a believer. Peter also, a Levite, showed growth by being ashamed at his error of ignorance and not seeking to justify or make an excuse for himself when Yahshua admonished him to feed his flock. Nor did Peter try to make an excuse when Paul restored him from his fault in Galatians. So though one may have been weak in the faith, there is examples to see that growth is possible to become grown in the faith and happy to confess faults. Let's return to Levi's visions in the heavens, picking up at the fifth heaven in Testament of Levi, chapter 3, verse 7 to 10, please. And in the heaven below this are the angels who bear answers to the angels of the presence of the Lord. And in the heaven next to this, our thrones and dominions, in which always they offer praise to Elohim. When therefore the Lord looketh upon us, all of us are shaken. Yea, the heavens and the earth and the abysses are shaken at the presence of his majesty. But the sons of men, having no perception of these things, sin and provoke the Most High. I wondered why this was told to the children of Levi. And notice an example of the reverence we ought to have looking at the fear the angels walk in towards Allah so as to keep on transgressing, understanding these spiritual things. Can you continue in Testament of Levi chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, please? Now, therefore, know that the Lord shall execute judgment upon the sons of men. But when the rocks are being rent, and the sun quenched, and the waters dried up, and the fire cowering, and all creation troubled, and the invisible spirits melting away, and haze take a spoil through the visitation of the Most High, men will be unbelieving and persist in their iniquity. On this account with punishment shall they be judged. Therefore the Most High have heard thy prayer, to separate thee from iniquity, and that thou shouldest become to him a son, and a servant, and a minister of his presence. 
Levi had to pray to be delivered from his own sins. His humility caused his prayer to be heard. Thankfully, he was given the spirit of understanding to see the corruption in himself and to know that he needed deliverance from his iniquity as well. In his life, we get to see him being taken through the process of being separated from iniquity as well. It wasn't an overnight process, yet he endured the course. Aaron went through the process as well of being delivered from his iniquity through his trials that we read about in the law. We even got to see Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, out of Babylon, being delivered from his iniquity by Yahche as well in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. All understanding that only Yahche can remove the burden of the iniquities of the Levites to purify them, even as he said he will do in Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. The Levites just have to come to repentance, submit ourselves in a broken heart and contrite spirit, confessing our sins, that we may be accepted of him and striving for righteousness, and looking at what's right in the sight of Allah. Can you pick back up where you left off? A little bit, please. Uh, I'm in the uh, Testament of Levi, chapter 4, verse 3. Okay. The light of knowledge shalt thou light up in Jacob. Moses gave the light of the law. All right. Continue. And as the sun shalt thou be to all the seed of Israel. John was a burning light in John 5 and 35 by preaching the gospel of repentance. Can you read Testament of Levi, chapter 14, verse 3, please? For as the heaven is purer in the Lord's sight than the earth, so also be ye, the sons of Israel, shall be as the sun, purer than all the Gentiles. It's a process through the fear of Allah for the sun of righteousness to come into Levi's heart to heal our transgressions and cause growth in us Levites to be pure as the sun. Can you read Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 please? But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arrive with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. When the light of righteousness arises in our hearts, we shall grow in the faith as calves in the stall being fed with our mother's milk of the word. This process will purify the children of Levi's minds to see things in purity as the sun and not be defiled overcoming those instruments of cruelty is within our habitations. Can you read Testament of Benjamin, chapter 8, verse 3, please? For if the sun is not defiled by shining on dung and myrrh, but rather drive up both and drive away the evil smell, so also the pure mind, though encompassed by the defilements of earth, rather cleanses them, is not itself defiled. Be separated unto Allah is mind is a process of growth wherein we can be in the midst of evil physically or in our minds and not be affected by it. Sadly, Levites tend to let the evil deeds of another person affect us and can't keep ourselves together when around wickedness. Also, in our mind, when being attacked with the evil spirits, we struggle to stay in temperance and not give heed to them, end up getting boggled down, and then we end up in sorrow or depression. But a single-minded man doesn't let the malicious deeds of another make their soul to pine away, as Issachar said. So wherein we thought it was our righteousness to get offended around sin, it's actually a sign of our need for growth in purity of mind. The angels behold all iniquity daily and yet are not in sorts about it or out of sorts about it, beholding all things in meekness and pity towards men. Hopefully it will help better understand 2 Corinthians chapter 6. To not be unequally yoked doesn't mean to separate completely from unbelievers, nor turn up our face or be offended at them for when they stumble or are in darkness. But to dwell in uprightness, even in the midst of unbelievers, staying yoked unto Yahweh's meekness and gentleness, who himself sat with publicans and sinners and still treated them with love and respect, not looking down upon them in his heart, or expressions, nor being frustrated with them. You'll find unrighteous Levites separating ourselves, not having anything to do with anyone who doesn't believe what we believe. Also, sadly, you can find that Levites tend to be loners within themselves. Levites will have friends and such, but inwardly, they aren't as connected with folks as they may lead one to believe. They are very introverted, 
on the inside, though it may not seem that way when interacting with others. In the faith, Levites tend to separate themselves, not having patience toward those that aren't of the same beliefs or at the same level of growth in their journey. Barnabas the Levite admonishes us about separating ourselves. Can you read Barnabas chapter 4, verse 10, please? Let us flee from our vanity. Let us entirely hate the works of the evil way. Do not entering in privily stand apart by yourselves, as if you are already justified, but assemble yourself together and consult concerning the common welfare. It takes humility to condescend to be men of low estate. And joining together with everyone in the faith of Yache, even if everyone isn't at the same level. Can you read verse 11, please? For the scripture says, Woe unto them that are wise for themselves, and understanding in their own sight. It's like it's actually speaking directly to Levites, because that's what we struggle with from the evidence of the spiritual struggles we face with pride and anger and self-will. These are all the works of the flesh that separate us from others. In the faith of Yache, continue please. Let us become spiritual. Let us become a temple perfect unto Elohim. As far as in us lies, let us exercise ourselves in the fear of Elohim. It's a workout to learn to walk in his fear because it's a retraining of ourselves from the old man, working out in our minds, our speech and actions to become new creatures. And it was some, he said that as far as in us lies, let us exercise ourselves in fear of Elohim. Everybody has certain levels of tolerance, right? For example, the scripture says, um, stand in awe and sin not, or be angry and sin not. Yeah. It's both of them. One's in Psalms and the other one's in... Uh... It's Ephesians, yeah. It's Ephesians. Ephesians, okay. Yeah. So with that, like, there's some people you may have, we may have a tough time being around because of things they may do or how they act. You have to go sit on your bed or know what tolerance level you have for being around that certain person. To make sure you don't sin. To help understand. It doesn't mean put yourself in a situation where you know you're going to fall because that's not wise, right? It's knowing your limits and then praying for deliverance and learning to be understanding of that person and be long suffering toward them. And as you grow, you can be able to spend more time around them. Hopefully that helps for more practical situations. And also um, helping with understanding as far as the Levites, that each Levite is going to be on a different level. Everyone's not going to be the same. So just like during the time of the priest, the priests were on a whole nother level than the rest of the Levites. And just looking at just the Levites themselves without looking at any of the other tribes. Everybody is going to be at a different level and you have to have understanding of that. You can't treat everybody based off of the level that you're operating on, whether higher or lower, to pass a judgment upon somebody. Thank you. Amen. Because that would not be condescending to a man of low estate. All right. Thank you. Uh, can you jump back at, let us become spiritual, let us become the temple perfect unto Allahayim. As far as in us lies, let us exercise ourselves in the fear of Allahayim. And let us strive. <laughs> <And I'm> <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though. <laughs> You could have just asked me to continue, though. I tried to help. <laughs> and let us strive to keep his commandments, that we may rejoice in his ordinances. Amen. Let's continue in the test of the Levi. <laughs> test of the Levi, chapter 4, verse 4, please. And there shall be given to thee a blessing, and to all thy seed, until the Lord shall visit all the Gentiles with his tender mercies forever. We know from the lesson, the keys to receive a blessing, what this blessing was that Levi received and all his true seed shall receive. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 26, please. Unto you first, Elihim, having raised up his son, Yache, 
to him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So the true seed of Levi will be turned from the iniquities by Yahweh Christ. Peter is a witness to these things, seeing his own conversion. Can you read Testament of Levi chapter 4 verse 5, please? And therefore there have been given to thee counsel and understanding, that thou mightest instruct thy sons concerning this, because they that bless him shall be blessed, and they that curse him shall perish. It's interesting, believing in Yahweh Christ is important, because they that bless him shall be blessed, and they that curse him shall perish. The words Levi have been given to speak of for the conversion of his true children. Sadly, not all the Levites will receive it. Yet the remnant, the 12,000 of his sons, shall be blessed with him to be turned away from their iniquities. And may we find grace to be among that number. Can you continue in Testament of Levi, chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, please? And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and upon a throne of glory the Most High. And he said to me, Levi, I have given thee the blessing of the priesthood until I come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. Then the angel brought me down to the earth and gave me a shield and a sword and said to me, Execute vengeance on Shechem because of Dinah, thy sister, and I will be with thee because the Lord hath sent me. And I destroyed at that time the sons of Hamor, as it is written in the heavenly tables. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who interceded for the nation of Israel, that it may not be smitten utterly. For every evil spirit attacketh it. And after these things I await, and I bless the Most High, and the angel who interceded for the nation of Israel, and for all the righteous. Here we have that angel who prays for the nation of Israel, that they may not be spent utterly, and he prays for all the righteous. That's Yahweh, according to 1 Timothy 2 and 5 and 2 John 2 and 1, who intercedes. So we have to call upon that name in our tribulations. Can you continue chapter 6, please? And when I was going to my father, I found a brazen shield. Therefore also the name of the mountain is Aspis, which is near Gabal of the south of Abla. And I kept these words in my heart. And after this, I counseled my father and Reuben, my brother, to bid the sons of Hamor not to be circumcised, for I was zealous because of the abomination which they had wrought on my sister. He was zealous for Allahim's sake, as Phineas was in the wilderness in the matter of Baal Zealous means filled with or showing a strong and energetic desire to get something done or see something succeed. When Levites are zealous for doing good works and was right in the sight of Allahim, Instead of what we want or desire through self-will, we are prospered, being in that optimistic and positive attitude. Continue, please. And I slew Shechem first, and Simeon slew Hamor. And after this, my brothers came and smote that city with the edge of the sword. And my father heard these things and was wroth. And he was grieved in that they had received the circumcision, and after that had been put to death. And in his blessing, he looked amiss upon us. For we sinned because we had done this thing against his will, and he was sick on that day. But I saw that the sentence of Elohim was for evil upon Shechem, for they sought to do to Sarah and Rebekah as they had done to Dinah our sister, but the Lord prevented them. And they persecuted Abraham my father when he was a stranger, and they vexed his flocks when they were big with young. And Ebeline, who was born in his house, they most shamefully handled. And thus they did to all strangers, taking away their wives by force, and they banished them. But the wrath of the Lord came upon them to the uttermost. And I said to my father Jacob, By thee will the Lord despoil the Canaanites, and I will give their land to thee, and to thy seed after thee. For from this day forward shall Shechem be called a city of imbeciles. For as a man mocketh the fool, so did we mock them because also they have wrought folly in Israel by the folly of my sister. And we departed and came to Bethel. And there again I saw a vision of the former, after we had spent there seventy days. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying unto me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood, and the crown of righteousness, and the breastplate of understanding. 
and the garment of truth, and the plate of faith, and the turban of the head, and the ephod of prophecy. And they severally carried these things and put them on me, and said unto me, From henceforth become a priest of the Lord, thou and thy seed forever. And the first anointed me with holy oil, and gave me the staff of judgment. The second washed me with pure water, and fed me with the bread and wine, even the most holy things, and clad me with a holy and glorious robe. The third clothed me with a linen vestment like an ephod. The fourth put around me a girdle like unto purple. The fifth gave me a branch of rich olive. The sixth placed a crown on my head. The seventh placed on my head a diadem of priesthood and filled my hands with incense that I might serve as priest to the Lord Elohim. And they said to me, Levi, thy seed shall be divided into three offices, for a sign of the glory of the Lord who is to come. And the first portion shall be great, yea, greater than it shall none be. That's Moses, all right? The second, the second shall be in the priesthood. That's Aaron. The third shall be called by a new name. John the Baptist. Because a king shall arise in Judah, and shall establish a new priesthood after the fashion of the Gentiles to all the Gentiles. Yahweh is that king that arose after the fashion of the Gentiles. And his presence is beloved, as a prophet of the Most High, of the seed of Abraham our father. John's name is beloved, and he was called the prophet of the highest according to this prophecy in Luke chapter 176. Continue, please. Therefore, every desirable thing in Israel shall be for thee and for thy seed, and ye shall eat everything fair to look upon. In the table of the Lord shall thy seed apportion, and some of them shall be high priests and judges and scribes, for by their mouth shall the holy place be guarded. And when I awoke, I understood that this dream was like the first dream, and I hid it also in my heart and told it not to any man upon the earth. That's the second dream Levi was shown that he didn't reveal. Levi set the example of being meek and not willing to divulge everything shown to him, not seeking the vain glory or the attention to be seen in the sight of men. His children struggle with vain glory, wanted to be seen in the sight of men, to have the spotlight or the attention on us. Case in point, in the time of the Maccabees, some of Aaron's children got killed, wanting the glory of showing their valor. So they went and fought unadvisedly and died in 1 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 67. Self-will led them astray, doing what they desired rather than what was advised for vainglory's sake. Then, for the glory of the Grecians, the sons of Aaron also forsook the sacrifices to become athletes and get the attention that came with it in 2 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. As we discussed before, so for the glory and attention it brings, many of the Levites become athletes or entertainers or whatever that will gain the attention from others. Also, Levites struggle within. So we struggle with wanting attention within, even in small circles. It could be relishing the attention from one's parents, spouse, or friends even. You can see how the Pharisees were willing to do whatever they had to do to maintain the glory they had in the sight of the people, for example, in John 11 and 48. Uh, continue, please, or back in where you're at in Levi. I'm on chapter 9. All right. And after two days, I and Judah went up with our father Jacob to Isaac, our father's father. And my father's father blessed me according to all the words of the vision which I had seen. And he would not come with us to Bethel. Jubilees 31 is where you can find the rest of that story on the blessing they received. You see how Levi walked in faith, not being lifted up or downcast about his dreams. But temperately waiting to see the outcome of the things. Just being single of heart, waiting on the will of Allah. Continue, please. Uh, chapter 9, verse 5 of the Testament of Levi. 
And so we came to Hebron to dwell there. And Isaac called me continually to put me in remembrance of the law of the Lord, even as the angel of the Lord showed unto me. And he taught me the law of the priesthood of sacrifices, whole burnt offerings, first fruits, free will offerings, and peace offerings. Levites are pretty one track minded. Whatever they're into, they're engulfed in that one thing, as you see in the case of Levi. His interest was the priesthood, and all his energy was spent on learning about it and performing it, as opposed to Judites. They're prosperous in all types of things, like Solomon, for example. Let's see what transpired in the time spent with Isaac, our father. Can you read the appendix of the Testament of Levi, chapter 1, verse 11 to 18, please? And we went from Bethel and lodged in the castle of Abraham, our father, with Isaac, our father. And Isaac, our father, saw us all, and he blessed us and rejoiced. And when he knew that I was the priest of the Most High Allah and Lord of heaven, he began to charge me and teach me the rites of the priesthood and said to me, Levi, take heed to thyself, my son, my son, against all defilement and all sin. Thy rites are greater than those of all flesh. That's the first admonition. We got to be on guard against all defilement and all sin. You should understand why we have to be on guard against everything because the spirits of wickedness, all the spirits of wickedness and all the spirits of pride attend upon us to cause us to sin. And we have to read the scriptures without ceasing to ensure our mind is thinking right and we are aware of the commands to walk in lest we sin. Continue, verse 15, please. And now, my son, I will show thee the rule of the truth, and will not hide from thee any matter to inform thee in the rites of the priesthood. First, take heed to thyself, my son, against all lust and uncleanness, and against all fornication. Levites struggle with all lust, uncleanness, and all fornication in every way. Levi's lust issue is not limited to fornication. The lust for attention can be a struggle, for example, or pleasure in various lusts of the flesh can also be a struggle. The uncleanness struggle can be the battle with unclean spirits wherein they struggle with wicked thoughts. Or unclean thoughts or unclean food, for example. Then the struggle with fornication is in all facets of fornication, mentally, physically and spiritually levites struggle with fornication hearkening to idols as well giving heed to these instruments of cruelty at work within us as we discussed in the former two lessons for the tribe of levi fornication has more manifestations than just sensual desires and acts please visit the lesson on understanding fornication to come in the near future lord willing for further edification on how fornication can be affecting a person, though a person may not be struggling with the sensual desire of the flesh. Also, the issue with the spirit of jealousy aids in this struggle with fornication. Can you read Reuben, Testament of Reuben, chapter 6, verse 4, please? For in fornication there is neither understanding nor holiness, and all jealousy dwelleth in the lust thereof. All jealousy dwells in fornication against Levi to fall to fornication in our thoughts. So you'll find a Levite can fall being jealous about something a person has, something a person does, or the attention they get, or how their own relationship is, and fall into the wrong thoughts. Jealousy of another's relationship or looking at what they have, not just being happy for them while being content with our lot and the spouse that Allah Hayyam has given us, can lead unto lustful thoughts and or thoughts leading unto fornication. As you've seen in the case of Hermas, for example, things weren't going well with his wife as he was mixed up in his business affairs. He wasn't happy at home. Then lust crept in on him through jealousy because he thought on this other woman named Rhoda and how happy he would be if he had her for a wife, coveting a happy relationship with her in his thoughts. This was all what transpired within him. She didn't know he had that thought. As you know, that Levi struggles within. So we can see through Hermas how he seemed good on the outside, treating her as a sister. Yet within, he did fall to an evil thought regarding her. These are the types of things that go on within the habitations of Levi. 
as you've seen in the case of Hermas on Just Thinking, along with envy, anger, self-will, and pride, and all wickedness, fornication is a serious spirit to be aware of. Can you read Testament of Simeon chapter 5, verse 3, please? Beware, therefore, of fornication. For fornication is mother of all evils, separating from Elohim, and bringing near to Belier. So do you have two major things. You have anger being the most evil of evil spirits, and fornication is the mother of all evils. Two major spirits to watch out for. Reuben gave some cures to overcome fornication. Testament of Reuben, chapter 4, verse 5 to 11, please. Therefore, my children, I say unto you, observe all things whatsoever I command you, and ye shall not sin. For a pit unto the soul is the sin of fornication, separating it from Elohim, and bringing it near to idols, because it deceiveth the mind and understanding, and leadeth young men into haze before their time. The issue with fornication isn't merely the desire of intimacy either. Because spiritual fornication is an issue too. Hearkening to idols, deceiving the mind as Reuben discusses how it brings us near to Belier. As Simeon said, A Levite struggle with hearkening to what's right in the sight of Elohim in their mind is an issue with fornication too. Continue, please. For many have fornication destroyed because though a man be old or noble or rich or poor, he bringeth reproach upon himself with the sons of men in derision with Belier. For ye heard regarding Joseph, how he guarded himself from a woman, and purged his thoughts from all fornication, and found favor in the sight of Elohim and men. For the Egyptian woman did many things unto him, and summoned magicians, and offered him love potions. But the purpose of his soul admitted no evil desire. Therefore the Elohim of your father delivered him from every evil and hidden death. For a fornication overcome not your mind, neither can bear the air overcome you. The battle against fornication is inward, to overcome it in the mind, to be delivered in the flesh. The Testament of Reuben, chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, please. Uh, the Testament of Reuben, chapter 6, verse 1. Beware, therefore, of fornication. And if you wish to be pure in mind, guard your senses from every woman. And command the women likewise not to associate with men, that they also may be pure in mind. For constant meetings, even though the unholy deed be not wrought, are to them an irremediable disease, and to us a destruction of Belier and an eternal reproach. Testament of Reuben, chapter 4, verse 1, please. Pay no heed, therefore, my children, to the beauty of women, nor set your mind on their affairs. But walk in singleness of heart in the fear of Ahia, and expend labor on good works, and on study, and on your flocks, until Ahia give you a wife, whom he will, that ye suffer not as I did. This admonition on overcome fornication aligns with the admonition of Isaac, our father. Can you go back to the appendix of the Testament of Levi, chapter 1, verse 17 to 18, please? And do thou take to thyself a wife of my family, and defile not thy seed with harlots. For thou art a holy seed, and holy is thy seed like the holy place. For a holy priest art thou, called among all the seed of Abraham. Thou art nigh to Elohim, and nigh to all his holy ones. Now be thou pure in thy flesh from every defilement of all men. Levi must be pure from every defilement of man. No lust of the flesh can be found in him. Testament of Levi, chapter 9, verse 9 to 10, please. And each day he was instructing me, and I was busy on my behalf before the Lord, and said to me, Beware of the spirit of fornication, for this shall continue, and shall by thy seed pollute the holy place. Take therefore to, thy, to thyself a wife without blemish or pollution, while thou art young, and not of the race of strange nations. A cure to overcome fornication is to marry a righteous woman who is without blemish or pollution, like Moses who took Zipporah who walked in all the ways of the daughters of Jacob and was not short in the righteousness of Sarah, Rebekah, Rachel, and Leah for a wife, or Aaron who took the Judite woman. Notice, she has to be without blemish or pollution, so you have to take the time to get to know the person and know who they are inside. 
like Moses, he spent a lot of time talking with Zipporah before he actually married her for understanding. Well, it doesn't years. matter what race she is of. Yeah. <laughs> he spent all that time, he made sure. <laughs> he nurtured that relationship like a flower. <laughs> It doesn't matter what race she's of, so long as she's a believer in Yahshua Christ. Working towards his salvation, because that will make her of the seed of Abraham by faith, and then she would be of the family of Isaac as he commanded, all right? And she wouldn't be of a strange nation because she's counted for the seed of Abraham through faith. Only the sons of Aaron are restricted from marrying any woman not of the seed of the house of Israel. Let's continue in Levi's story, please. Uh, can you read Testament of Levi, chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, please? All right. And he would not come with us to Bethel. And when we came to Bethel, my father saw a vision concerning me, that I should be their priest unto Elohim. And he rose up early in the morning and paid tithes of all to the Lord through me. Levi was humble not to reveal what was shown unto him but waited on Ahaya to bring all things to pass, lest he should seem to be exalting himself through pride. Joseph, on the other hand, was still overcoming pride in his youth and would tell about his dreams he had exalted himself above his brethren. As the book of Jasher said in chapter 41, verse 7 to 9. So you can see the difference of how Levi was further along in regards to pride and vainglory at that time. It takes meekness like Levi had not to seek the attention or to be exalted in the midst of others. Can you read Sirach chapter 1 verse 30, please? Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall, and bring dishonor upon thy soul, and so Elohim discover thy secrets. And cast thee down in the midst of the congregation, because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. Let us be mindful of our heart. And give not heed to these spirits walking in humility of heart and simplicity of spirit contrite toward Allah hopefully this was edifying and in the next lesson we'll touch on the admonitions of Levi for the next and final lesson concerning the tribe of Levi anything brother Zakwa? nope um, we're just going to pray out and we're going to wish everybody a wonderful feast day uh, feast week this is the Feast of Tabernacles, which is an entire week. So we hope everybody enjoys it. Um, it's a blessing. Have a party. You know, praise the high. You know, if we had the tendency back in the day, we would party and, and just have a good time on our whatever we want to call it, holidays. But now, you know, we have a chance to party for Elohim. You know, David partied. David partied hard yeah. for Elohim. So turn that music on and, and get after it. <laughs> what the what the scriptures say? Let's go to Sirach on um turn out the music down on the oh. feast. Yeah, the, uh, you got it. You about to pull it up? Oh no no no! Oh, I just said it. Oh, let me go. Oh okay. Um, it's Sirach thirty two and three. Speak thou that thou art the elder, for it becometh thee, but with sound judgment and hinder not music. So yeah, you gotta let that music play, man, and let people enjoy themselves. You know, you can't yeah. stop the music and want to take over and want to <laughs> talk about like, hey, brother, I'm about, I'm about to talk about these scriptures. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good to talk about the scriptures, but you also have to let people enjoy the feast day. So yes, sir. Don't get sidetracked and try to take all the time for yourself even on the feast day with the people that you're congregating with. Let them enjoy the party. It's a festival. It's a feast day. It's a party. Enjoy that. Enjoy the company of people and have fun. So. Man. All right. We hope you all enjoy part three. We're going to pray out and keep your eyes up for part four. Uh, how you willing? I I I do this prayer for you this time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For thine art the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. For All right. We Amen. hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. And um, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, please send us an email to HebrewReaders at gmail.com. If you just want to write in the comment section below, feel free. We'll try to respond to you at our earliest convenience. I you be gracious. I you keep you all. And may you all be prosperous through this week. Shout out to Chala. HRC, 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 HRC,